Welcome people, welcome back to another daily gaffer. I've been so busy recently that I've resorted to filming these on the go, otherwise it just won't get done. Before I continue people, please be sure to like, share and subscribe. We have to fight Al Gore and his terrible, terrible rhythms. God damn. Ay, ay, ay. Anyways, um, today's show, people, I will be talking about a few things. I try and keep these daily gaffers down to just one topic each, but I haven't done one for a day or two, and so much has happened. So today I'll be talking about the whole Pogba situation. I'm gonna call it Poggate. I'm gonna also talk about England again. It's, I feel like Southgate might be fumbling the bag with his reluctance to drop certain players and reliability issues and all that stuff. And lastly, I wanna to touch briefly on, um, I might touch on Sancho, I'm not sure. I might leave it because, I'll start on Sancho. A video surfaced uh, today of him in New York partying. This is on the back of him putting that statement on Twitter about, you know, what Ten Hag said. We know, we know what the statement was. And then him taking it off his Twitter. Um, and he's decided that it's a good time for him to go partying. And the thing is, I'm not actually against football players enjoying themselves and winding down. But you've got to be very tactical uh, in what you're doing, you know. With everything that's going on, Jalen, you don't really want to be seen out party because it just doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. Like, like, even if you've been doing this every weekend since since you, since you forever, it doesn't matter. It just doesn't look good because of the current situation. Um, a week ago, just over a week ago, when uh, the statement first arose, oh yeah, just over about ten days ago, I thought his career at United was over. But he may be thrown a lifeline with the with uh, Anthony being on gardening leave. So I think he pretty much knows he's back in the team. Apparently, he had a meeting with Ten Hag. We don't know. But I just want to say, Sancho, 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 you're letting all of us down, brother. All of us who grew up in South London, you're letting us down. And I, I don't know, people, um, that your English career is definitely over before it even began. And your United career looks to be going the same way. Where next for Sancho? Apparently back to Dortmund. But no, that's not going to work because Hakimi's not there and Haaland isn't there either. So that's not going to work. Um, and I don't see any other big club. I don't know. I don't know if he improves a team. There are players in his position in the world on far less wages, with far less baggage, that offer a lot more than what Sancho offers. So, unfortunately, brother Sancho, I think that your time. At Manchester United Sports Directive is um, is over. Anyways, that was just meant to be a um, a small a small section of today's daily gaffer. Um, but staying at Manchester United Sports Directive, let's talk about Paul Pogba, another person whose career seems to be over. Um, when I first heard the news of him failing his drugs test, immediately I thought he's guilty, he's guilty! Because you know, you think he's injured, he's trying any, anything to get a bag, so automatically you start to connect dots that may have no connection, and you just think guilty, guilty, guilty. But then I didn't. I was gonna do a video immediately, I didn't do a video. And then I was gonna do a video the following day, didn't do it. And then I um, was gonna do another video, and I thought, no, let me just think about this. And now I'm starting to think, 
I kind of feel for Paul Pogba, you know? Um, he, was at, he was at United, sorry, he was at Manchester United Sports Directive, left, went Juve, had the perfect surroundings for him to flourish. He was in what I call the Goldilocks zone. Um, and he flourished. And for one reason or other, he thought it would be a good idea for him to go back to Manchester United Sports Directive. Maybe they were the only club willing to pay what Juve were demanding. Um, maybe he wanted to go back. Whatever the case was, he returned to Manchester United Sports Directive. And unfortunately, his return to Manchester United Sports Directive coincided with them being in one of the worst periods of their recent history. And so he went from being in a place with the perfect um, conditions for him to flourish. Oh, you let me go? Thank you, sir. Cheers. Um, for him to flourish, to being in a place with the worst conditions. He was still very influential when he did play, although his time was blighted by injuries. Uh, but he did win at least one Europa League, I believe, and maybe a League Cup. I might be wrong, but I don't judge a player solely on trophies because a lot of players that I grew up watching weren't winning uh, a shed load of trophies. You know, some of them were, some weren't. Pablo Aymar, Juan Roman Riquelme, like these people weren't winning trophies. Gary McAllister, these people were not winning trophies season in, season out. They were just a joy to behold on the football pitch. So, when I judge Pogba, I look at his ability, and let's not forget, he has won the biggest of them all, the World Cup. Again, in ideal surroundings, ideal situation. Blaise Matuidi, N'Golo Kante. What did he have at Juve? He had Perlo, Perlo, not Vidal. Did he have Altru Vidal? Possibly. But guys, I just want to, the Pogba thing, I, I want to say I feel for the guy and this whole thing surrounding Pogba and his career and his life has made me realise that that voodoo is actually real. Um, it's real. His brother, or whoever it is, that put this curse on him. <sighs> yeah. I saw a statement the other day saying that Paul Pogba said that he doesn't want money anymore because of what it's done to people around him. I just feel, I feel like the boy's been cursed. The boy, because nothing makes sense, guys. Nothing makes sense. So, um... I'm not gonna jump on the on the Pogba's a clown bandwagon. I feel like now is the time we need to support the lad, stand by the lad, and as it's that, you know what I was saying. Oh my gosh, guys! I think this whole thing could be a conspiracy. I think it's a conspiracy, people. Hear me out. Yo, conspiracy, conspiracy. I believe that Paul Pogba. Um, could be a victim of a conspiracy because there was talk about him meeting with Juve um, head honchos to discuss discuss restructuring his, his contract, you know, because he hasn't played and he's on very good money. And then all of a sudden this comes out. Now, Italy may be one of the most corrupt places I've visited in my life. I'm just saying, I wouldn't be surprised. Because what was it? Was it the, the drug test wasn't done by WADA or the IOC? It was done by NADO? Something like that. When I was reading on this, it was the Italian anti doping people who gave him a test on a match he didn't even play in. He was an unused substitute, yet he was still subject to a, a, a test. I don't know, people. I don't like, listen. Sometimes the truth is stranger than fiction. So um, I think we just need to just um, you know, think. What are you doing? Which way are you turning? I'm trying to go down here. Thank you, sir. We just need to just you know think open-mindedly, but before we jump to conclusions with regards to anything, not just the Pogba case. But nonetheless, I'm saying I'm going to stand by Pogba um, because you don't kick him out when he's down. That's one thing I've learned in my time. Um, lastly. Southgate, England. Um, after the game, I think Southgate said something along the lines of the treatment on Harry Maguire has been 
some of the worst he's ever seen. Or something, this doesn't make sense. <sighs> Southgate, there were better players than Harry Maguire for England. These are just stone cold facts, okay? And I feel like you're, you standing by Maguire could be the, the death of this this beautiful nation of football. You, I've looked at the, um, the gold power rankings for Euro 2024 and England are just second favourites, just behind France. So, um, it's a golden opportunity. We've got two fantastic midfielders in Bellingham and Rice. We've got Phil Foden, Bukayo Saka, Kane, Rashford. We've got everything we need to succeed. And I feel like Southgate could fumble the Euro 2024 bag if he's not careful. So, um, yeah, that's it. I'm not going to stick on England for too long because um, it's, um, I'm, I'm, I get tired of speaking on, on Southgate. But... Uh, I think he just needs to go as soon as the tournament's over he needs to go and we need to accept as a as a people that um harry Maguire, as long as southgate is there Maguire will be there okay so um, let's stop more, let's stop complaining about it let's accept it and move forward uh, and just just wish for the best this is hope that croatia don't knock us out at the quarterfinals um next year that's it guys that's your daily gaffer um thank you for your support uh a bit of housekeeping at the end the conti corner is back if you're new to armchair gaffers if you've only found us through daily gaffer we have a monday podcast where we cover premier league football and a tuesday show where we cover european football which has been on hiatus but it ret- it's returned it's back so please you click uh i'm gonna put the conti corner here and then when that's gone, I'm going to put the podcast here as well. So they're both there. And they'll be in the description too. Um, and I'll see you next time, guys. Peace out.